Hey everybody, welcome back to my Subaru for another devotion on emotions. And today we're going to wrap up our discussion that we've been having on the emotion of sadness, of sorrow, and of grief. And what we've said so far is that a Christian should expect tears. We live in a fallen, broken world where there is loss, where there is disaster, and where there are things that just cause us to weep. Secondly, though, we said that not only are we supposed to expect tears, we can actually invest our tears or sow our tears. And those tears can actually produce in us good things. Those tears will be turned to joy. But when we invest our tears, when we plant our tears, what can grow in us is a deeper faith, a, a, a stronger empathy, a, more developed character and stronger and uh, more healthy relationships as well. But finally, the third thing that we can do with our tears, and this is so critical, we can pray our tears. In other words, in the Psalms, we see over and over where David runs to his God with all of his emotion, with all of his anguish, with his fears, with his anger, and especially with his grief, with his tears. Now, friends are vital. Living in community is so essential. And some tend to run quickly to friends and to family. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have anything against that. But we cannot miss the importance and the value of running to God with our pain. Running to our Heavenly Father with our tears. Listen to Psalm 56, verse 8. You keep track of all of my sorrows. David is praying to his heavenly Father. You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all of my tears in your bottle, and you have recorded each one in your book. I shared this verse with my daughter just the other day as we were saying goodbye, and it was very difficult. It was very emotional. And, and we were all filled with tears. And I just reminded her that your heavenly father, honey, is bottling your tears. And she, of course, laughed because she uh, pictures God with a whole lot of bottles for all of her tears. But as we come to God, I want you to, to pray in light of a couple of things. One, pray in light of God's love. When you come to God with your tears, come to Him in light of His love. See, the beauty of the Psalms is that whatever emotion you're feeling, um, God's love remains. Even when you are theologically wrong. <laughs> Listen to Psalm 39, verse 12. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my sobbing. And then he, then he gets off theologically. Listen to what he says. I'm like a guest in your home. I'm only a visitor, like all of my family who lived before me. And then he says this. It, 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 he's confused. And, and sometimes when you're emotional, you're not always rational. And, and we see that in David's prayer here. The next verse says this. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, God. Let me be full of joy again before I die. See, this is the beauty of God. He knows how we speak when we're desperate. He knows how we speak when we are in deep grief. And He's not afraid of it. And He's not bothered by it. C.S. Lewis says this, The great thing to remember is that though our feelings come and go, God's love remains. And so pray and take your tears to God in light of His love. But secondly, pray and take your tears to God in light of the cross. Even Jesus Himself experienced deep grief and sorrow. In Matthew 26, verse 38, He said, My soul, He says this to His disciples, My soul, is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And then he asks his closest friends, stay here with me. 
stay here with me and keep watch. There is no other faith, no other religion, no other book like this one. Buddhism tells you to deny your emotions. Islam calls sorrow and grief a negative emotion to be avoided. And yet here we see our Lord and Savior embracing, embracing deep grief in his life. And so, two final thoughts. God knows your pain. And that's why we pray in light of the cross, because he knows your pain. If someone has experienced the horrific grief, for example, of losing a child, they're not afraid to talk to someone. They're not afraid of, of someone who has experienced the same kind of loss and grief. And see, we have a God who knows our pain. He's not afraid of whatever it is we bring to Him because He knows where we're at. And so when you feel abandoned, when you feel alone, when you feel like your prayers don't get past the ceiling, look at the cross and see a God, see a Savior who is crying out in grief. And remind yourself, Remind yourself that he was forsaken so that you would not be forsaken. Remind yourself that even when you pray for God to leave you, <laughs> he promises that he won't. And then as you pray in light of the cross, the second thing is, is bear in mind, even Jesus needed friends. You do need friends and family and loved ones. You do need people that you can run to, who will sit with you, who won't lecture you or give you a sermon, but who will sit with you in your grief and your pain and just love you. And they'll listen to you. You can vent to them. You can say things that are wacky and, and untrue, but they won't be put off by it. There was an interesting study that I heard on NPR some time ago, and it was a study with rats. They, the first study was this. They took one rat and they gave this rat two options to drink from. One was water and one was water that was laced with heroin. And the rat quickly got addicted and died of an overdose. But then they did a second study. Same thing, two options of water. One was clean water, one was water laced with heroin. But this time they put the rat's in this environment together. They had a community. And, and listen to what happened. Not one rat died. Not even one rat experienced an overdose or got even addicted to the heroin. See, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. Let me say that again. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety but connection. It's deep, meaningful relationships. Some of you have struggled with addictions. And the most powerful thing that you can do to fight against your addictions, whether it's alcohol or heroin or shopping or Netflix or food or whatever it may be, the most powerful connection, the most powerful thing against that addiction is connection with other people and not connection through social media. That is a, a, a sugar pill. It's not real. It is deep, meaningful, face-to-face -face relationships. Some of you are sheltering in place still, and I know it's difficult. And you need to find a way to connect with other people. Go for walks and maintain social distance. What, whatever you need to do, you need to reach out to someone and find meaningful human relationships. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I need you. See, there are tears that come from self-pity. And those tears make us small, oversensitive, unwilling to forgive. We're always blaming others for our unhappiness, for our impatience. We experience false guilt and we become self-absorbed. But when we look at the cross and we see 
the agony and the grief and the sorrow of Jesus and what he went through for your sake and for my sake, it can put us back in perspective. And then our tears can strengthen us. And then our tears can grow us. One final thought. Pray in light of your ultimate future. Don't just look at the cross. Look at what comes after the cross. The resurrection. That is where our hope is. Psalm, 68, Psalm 16 verse 8 says, I know that the Lord is always with me. See, David is talking to himself. He's preaching to his heart. I know that the Lord is always with me. He is at my right hand. I will always be secure. So my heart is glad. Joy is on my tongue. My body also will be secure. You will not leave me in the grave. You will not let your faithful one rot away. You always show me the path that leads to life. You will fill me with joy when I am with you. You will give me endless pleasures at your right hands. And so pray in light of your ultimate future. And friend, that is your ultimate future. A resurrection. A, a resurrection with a new body in a new kingdom in a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no more tears. And so God bless you guys as you run to God with all of your sorrow, with all of your grief, with all of your pain, whatever it is, run to your God. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next time.